Alrighty then, welcome back to another Water Change Wednesday. I almost forgot it's Wednesday. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Uh, just want to make sure our audio is good because, you know, we always have these audio issues. Let's just make sure. All right, yeah, it sounds good. Great, awesome. So, what is happening, everybody? Hope you're having a good Wednesday. Um, just want to get into the chat for some reason. I closed down my chat. Okay, now I have the chat open. Uh, so how's everybody's week going? Last couple weeks, um, haven't been here uh, in two weeks, so um, we'll wait for people to climb in here and uh, get this underway. But today, uh, I just kind of wanted to give a, an update. We do we did uh, get tropical complaints in today, so we have a bunch of um, new, not only uh, old, like other tropical complaints that we have gotten in in the past, but we got some a couple new ones too that look really nice. So if you want to check those out, you can head over onto the website. Uh, we should have more tissue cultures from Tropica in in the next day or so. They they're sent separately, so they weren't in the same shipment. Um, but I would suggest if you want any of the plants that we just got in, order them now and then order the tissue cultures when we get them in on either Friday. Uh, it should be Friday, I would assume Friday, um, just because they may sell fast. We didn't get a lot of each one. We only got a couple to really test them out, but they look great. So, um, yeah, if you're in the market for some tropical plants, definitely take a look and uh, let's see what came in. There's some good stuff in there. Um, and that's, uh, I think that's really about it. Um, Okay, sorry, just want to make sure. Uh, so without uh, without anything else, let's see who we got in the chat. What's up, Levy B? How's it going? Uh, Harley Sanchez says, how do you plant stems without the bottoms rotting? Uh, that's kind of tricky. Sometimes stems will just rot no matter what you do. But the best uh, case scenario is you want to plant them separately. You don't want to plant them right next to each other. So give them about an inch or two apart. And, um, you know, plant them. Hopefully they're not being, like, um, suffocated by the type of substrate. Sometimes when you have sand substrate, it could suffocate the, uh, the bottom of the stems and cause rotting. It could also just be above water growth, which happens quite often. Uh, you get a plant in that was grown above water. You plant it. It starts to melt back. Best thing is cut above the rot, uh, like uh, about a half an inch above the rot. So you cut in fresh or, or um, alive material, you know, and, and cutting away the decay and then uh, get rid of the decay and replant the top and you should be good. Um, so yeah, so stem rot, it sucks, but usually it's avoidable um, or it's not avoidable. And, uh, but there's ways to improve your chances like planting them apart from each other really help. Uh, so yeah, that's really about it. With that, let's see who else we got in here. Uh, what is going on, everybody? Uh, how would you handle spider mites? Uh, spider mites in a paludarium. Spider mites. Those are, if I remember correctly, those are the little things that I often get. Spider mites. Let me just look them up real quick, because I'm pretty sure spider mites. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so the way that I, um, they're, they're a pain in the butt. The way that I typically deal with them is spraying them with, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, it's like a soapy water mixture with, um, so it's one part water, one part hydrogen peroxide and, and like a, just a splash of just dish, dish soap. Um, and that'll usually take care of um, the spider mites. Typically, the spider mites, though, I found uh, will come when, when conditions aren't wet enough. Um, they seem to thrive when it's dry. So in a paludarium, um, it's kind of weird that they would be there. Uh, but yeah, I would just try a little uh, spray with a little rubbing alcohol what what did i say peroxide or rubbing alcohol rubbing alcohol is what i meant to say if i said hydrogen peroxide i'm sorry uh rubbing alcohol one part water put a little tiny dish soap in there you could probably exclude the dish soap if you have sensitive uh animals in your paludarium i would just go with one part water one part alcohol um and see what that does that should probably take care of them what is your favorite substrate for plants um well you can use pretty much anything you want. I mean, the aqua soils are really good. They definitely have their benefits. But honestly, like, you could use anything. Uh, the, uh, like, Seachem uh, Fluoride or EcoComplete works just fine for me. Um, 
if you want to do sand you can do that too just use root tabs um you know it just it really comes down to the plants that you're trying to grow if you like if you have really easy plants and you're just trying to grow like vowels and swords and stuff you can you can get away with sand and it'd be fine but uh they do like root tabs so root tabs definitely help out what do you think is the best light for a 30 gallon aquarium i would probably say i would go with either the fluval um what is it the fluval 3.0 planted tank light or i would go with like a uh, night crew light from amazon they're pretty cheap and they're really good but um yeah those are those are my top two i would say depends on your budget too if you're looking to spend you know if you're looking to stay cheap definitely the night crew um it's probably like uh i don't know either half or or less the price hold on i just want to grab my drink and uh Yes, I am in my living room. We are my plant walls behind us right now. Or my plant window. Doggies are all around, so that's the tippy tappy. Sorry. Um, yeah, I figured because it's a little cold in the back room right now, and I was just like, yeah, I don't really want to wear a sweatshirt the whole time. So let me just do a video here or do the live stream here instead. So, but uh, this fiddly fig, check this thing out. This thing is huge. It's massive. Uh, this plant up here, I, I need to trim back. It's got some um, dry leaves. It's an orchid, cact uh, orchid cactus. Yeah, orchid cactus. Um, that's a, one of the asparagus ferns. That's the silver vase plant. You got uh, elf, uh, alocasia. Uh, or also known as African mass. Actually, no. The African mass plant is here. The regal shield plant is here. It's the same family. Uh, this, whoop, this way. This way. Right here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a uh, philodendron species. So that's my plant wall. The fiddle leaf fig goes up to the roof too. It's pretty big. There we go. So yeah, so um, I don't know. What else? What other questions you guys have? Also, has anybody ordered? Um, anybody here? Have you guys gotten any of the tropical plants we've recently been selling? Um, I'm interested to hear thoughts on it, and um, you know, if you guys are having good experiences with them because we've gotten them in, they look great. But at the end uh, end of it, I want to hear what the end consumers uh, having. Uh, also, if you have a second um and then you did get the tropical plants i would really appreciate it if you left reviews on the website for them not only that but you make uh two dollars and fifty cents in credit every week when you leave one review so we only pay you for the first review but and it gives you points in your um rewards account so that plant is awesome yeah wait which plant the fiddle leaf fig the big one because that that guy's awesome i love it it's one of my favorite plants What's up, plural singularity? Kevin, how do I get my Ludwigia to root into substrate better? It's shooting roots everywhere in the water column, but not really into the gravel substrate. Uh, you probably just have to trim it more, Kevin. Uh, the more you trim it, the more it's going to branch out, and uh, the more it'll probably root. Um, the more a plant takes damage, the stronger it'll get, oh, You know, as long as it doesn't take severe damage, but you essentially chop it in half, and uh, it'll sprout more roots usually. So that's what I would do. Nisi says, love your plant wall. Thanks. Yeah, this is uh, this is only like half the plants I have. I have even more all throughout the house. I'm beginning to uh, downsize, though, the plants. Got just too many. I want to get rid of some. How's it going, Jacob? Yeah, it's interesting. I haven't bought new plants in probably i don't know like eight months or so just because it's like i have so many and i'm just like i i need to start getting rid of some before i can buy any more they're they're you know i love them 
and uh, I love to uh, you know have them but it's just like I was getting so many of them you know I was probably getting like three a week or something I'd be going specifically to like Home Depot or Lowe's seeing what they had uh, we'd take a trip probably once every couple of weeks to the local nursery plant nursery and uh, see what they had and it was just getting out of control I'm like I gotta slow down I'm getting too much too quick and uh yeah so slowed down a couple plants died it happens but now i think we're at a good spot videos are uh helpful thank uh videos are very helpful thanks thanks for making them you're welcome jacob uh anytime you know i make the videos to assist you guys show you new products show you new plans hopefully you choose to buy them from me and uh you know yeah, I got a bunch of questions on the um, on the algae fix video that I uploaded on Sunday. I got a or Monday. I, I've kind of moved, by the way. If you're watching this, I moved my upload schedule from Sunday night to like Monday midday. Although this video went up like Monday evening, um, it just makes it a little bit easier because usually I'm rushing like Sunday night to edit and get it out. Like I film, edit, and upload on Sunday usually, um, so. If I put put it on to Monday, so I do all that and then upload on Monday or schedule it for Monday, uh, it just takes a little pressure off because it gives me a little bit of time in the morning. If um, you know, sometimes I'm like falling asleep as I'm editing. Like I'm sitting there and I'm like in bed editing and I'm like nodding off. I'll wake up like 15 minutes later, and be like, oh my god, I gotta get this done. And you know, sometimes I'm just exhausted and I'll fall asleep. Um, don't ask me why. It's just like in the moment the lights go off. It's instant sleep mode um but yeah so i uh i sit there and i edit and uh, i rush to try and get it out but if i go upload it in the morning or or uh you know do all the things in the morning to get it out that day then then it works out even better so pretty much now new video every monday i would say um sometimes they may come out on sunday it depends like if it was a, a quick video to edit it'll be uploaded and released on sunday but usually monday is going to be my new day i feel like it's a little bit out uh, a little bit better. That's where I'm at. Um, stress, uh, I'm stressed buying plants. I took home a few monsters and a Swiss cheese plant. Uh, nice. The uh, the monsters are beautiful. Mine's not doing too well. I need to get a humidifier. It's um, e either I'm not watering enough or it's too dry in here. And I think it's just too dry in here for it because it was doing well uh, during the summer when the humidity was higher. So I'm gonna I'm gonna probably have to buy a humidifier. It's still alive, like it's still growing, but it um yeah. It needs uh it needs more humidity for sure. For sure. The um the what is it? The this plant back here. Uh you can't really see it. It's a um what is the name of it? It's Lake of Monstera. It's not a Monstera. It's like a Swiss cheese uh, philodendron, I think. I forgot the name of it. But it has holes in its leaves, much like the Monstera does, except they're not like... Um, I don't know how to explain it. They're more just holes in the middle of the leaf versus uh, like fins, I guess. The humidifier will help for sure. Mine was a minor in a west-facing bathroom. It gets steamy in there at least twice a day. Yeah, see, that's good. I, I wish our bathroom... They... They really suck the way they built this house. Let me tell you. Split leaf philodendron. There you go. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, they really suck when they built this house because uh, they they completely remodeled the kitchen and the bathroom, but they were horrible designers because the bathroom upstairs is just god awful the way they did it. Like one day I should just do a video on like how awful it is. But they could have put a huge window in the bathroom. And keep in mind, it's on the second story and nobody can see in. So there's no reason not to put a huge window on it because, like, it's it's facing the back of the house. There's no houses directly behind it. Like, there's one farther off to the, the right of the window. They wouldn't be able to see in. Like, so you could have put a huge window there and made it, like, an amazing bathroom. And they didn't. So one day I'll hopefully... Uh, remodel the bathroom that's one thing that i i want to put a huge window upstairs in the bathroom and i want to put a huge window over in the next room over here um because all i have are these three windows here on this wall and then the rest of the the house 
that goes that way has no windows until you get to the front of the front of the house and um if if that room had three more windows or just massive windows it'd be great so i don't know it really sucks they they I wish I would have bought this house and did the renovation myself because I could have done it so much better. Like even this room, there's like a wall over here. They should have tore down this wall and just did a beam and made it an open concept, but they didn't. It was stupid. I don't know. And we were just too needy of uh, needing to get into a house. So my nose is so itchy right now. I don't know why. I feel like it always is whenever I stream. Um, uh, Elena, is that how you say it? Elena Ramos uh, says I have two Amados that always hang out by the filter and only move at night. Does anyone uh, know if this is normal? Um, I guess, I mean, if they're moving, then should be fine. There's there's probably just tasty stuff over there, maybe, and they're just trying to grab it. Uh, as long as they're not dying, they should be fine. I'm moving soon, the trip is eight hours. What is the best way to pack my tanks, uh, my tank plants? Okay, so is it just plants or is it fish too? Because uh, it's tricky. Um, so here's what I, well, it really depends on the setup. So if you have a lot of hardscape material and if it's, so in most cases, I'm gonna assume it's not glued down. Like uh, some of the tanks that we have are glued down uh, like the rocks and stuff, but if they're not glued down, I'd probably remove all the hardscape one, uh, put that in a separate bucket. If there's plants on it, um, you can kind of wrap them in cellophane or saran wrap and uh, just spritz them down so they're moist or wet and, and wrap them up, they should be fine. Um, as far as the rest of the plants and the tank without having to really you know, tear down the whole tank, uh, what I would do is I would take out as much water as possible, but only leaving like a tiny bit for the snails, right? Uh, I see you say plants and snails. Okay, so there's no fish. So this should be relatively easy. So you leave a little bit of water down there and for the snails. It's going to be tricky to move because if it's a rimless tank, it, you can't really lift it um, individually like in the corners because everything will pour out from the middle. But if it's a rimmed tank, so it has the black border around it, you should be fine. So what you do is you... you um, you, you drain as, as much water as you can. I would put down wet paper towels uh, and kind of put them all throughout the uh, aquarium on everything to keep them wet, make sure the, the paper towels are wet themselves. Um, I would uh, saran wrap the top and then I would uh, take it and just move it like that and load it up. Uh, the plants and everything should be fine because they're gonna be wet. They could be without light for eight hours, it'll be fine. Um, just don't leave, I like, if it's cold where you're going or it's cold when you're moving, I wouldn't leave them in the car for too long or the moving truck or whatever uh, without being warm. Um, so it would probably be like one of the last things I load. Uh, you also wanna try and secure it, it's like secure it to a wall of like a moving truck if you're using a moving truck or making sure that it doesn't move wherever you're putting it. Um, the like what I do when we move our tanks is I wrap them in moving blankets completely all the way around the rims. They're rimless, so it's a little bit uh, like like fragile compared to a rim tank. And um, wrap them in moving blankets and then ratchet them down so they don't move. And that's probably the best way to do it. And then just fill the tank back up when you get there. Uh, make sure you place a longboard under it to help support the tank. Yes, that's also another good thing is, um, you know, if you can slide it off like, I would almost probably take like, um, uh, I don't know, make something out of like two by fours and plywood, um, like a temporary shelf almost, and have like two people hold onto that and somebody slide the tank onto it and then you move it on top of that. It's just gonna be much easier to move everything. So um, yeah, and if you could get it on the floor, it's great. Like me, we move our whole tank with the stand and everything, but they're a lot smaller um, or they're smallish tanks. so. It's a little bit easier to move. Uh, Jay Nunley says, "Hola, any advice for a new for a new to pressurize CO two? Add a dual stage regulator to medium tank or medium tech tank using fluval plant at three point with intensity turned down to less than half. Uh, thrive all in one dosing. Um, so just simply start out with uh, just a little bit of co2 you don't need to go crazy with it like one bubble a second is fine uh, maybe even one bu bubble every two seconds 
and just see what happens. Uh, odds are you're going to get algae blooms because you're going to have an increased uh, in influx in CO2 and your plants are gonna, aren't going to be adjusted to it yet. Um, so just keep that in mind. It, uh, it will most likely sprout some algae. But don't overdo it with the CO2. Less is more when it comes to it. Do you know how to get rid of limpets? Small and ugly. I don't know how to really get rid of them, but I will tell you they're, while you may not like them, they're good for your aquarium. They they are part of the natural ecosystem. Um, usually I find they kind of um, die out on their own for the most part. We used to have them in our aquariums and I kind of can't spot any anymore. Um, and we didn't do anything special. So I would say, um, you know, don't 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 stress it too much. They're they're really good for the aquarium though, you know. Jay Nunley says uh, bottle instructions got BBA for the first time a few days ago. Oh, does okay. Uh, got BBA for the first time a few days ago after introducing CO two. Yeah, actually, that's what I was just saying. I didn't even read this next line. Was running one bubble a second. Researched and found it may be fluctuating CO two levels causing BBA. Yes. That is, uh, that is exactly most likely what what's the case. Bumped it up to two uh, bubbles a second um, to keep drop checker green. Doesn't seem to have spread or increased BBA. Any issues with running lower CO2 doses? Yeah, less is more. Like I said, less is more. You don't have to go crazy with the CO2. Um, basically, the BBA is going to spread up because you went from having like no CO2 to all of a sudden having a lot of CO2. And that's the fluctuation. It's not like... It's going like this every hour or something. It's just it went up all of a sudden, and now you have this influx of CO2, and your aquarium doesn't know what to do with it, and algae just sprouts up. So, um, yeah. Do you know if any LED screw-in bulbs you find particularly good for growing plants, aquatic or otherwise? I've experimented here or there, but I've found... I have trouble finding them above 55k spectrum. So Kevin, I do know a lot of people use grow bulbs. Um, we even use them too. At one point, we use the like they're high intensity, just red and blue. Um, they have no white in them, and it makes me sick every time I look at them when they that, when they were on. Like they they were like uh, growing mosses and other plants in like a small tray. I couldn't look at it for too long. It like made me nauseous. But um, those do work. It just, you have to look for grow lights. Like grow lights that advertise they'll grow plants. As long as it's not a huge aquarium, it should grow them. Like if it's a 10 gallon tank, it should be fine. But I would look for one that is white light uh, and not just red and blues. But you could do like one white and two red and blues or one red and blue at like off times or or when you're not like really looking at it, like you can flick it off um, because it just, it makes, I don't know, it makes me nauseous. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but yeah. VB is back. What's up, VB? Do you know if Osmoco is good for peace lily? Sure. Big, beautiful algae. <laughs> Black beard algae is BBA. <laughs> hey, Justin, plants are doing well uh, now that they've settled in. Thanks for the box. Awesome. Thanks again for your order, Rob. I appreciate it. And, um, yeah, I'm glad to see everything made a well. Uh, appreciate the video, too. If anybody didn't check, I actually I, I don't think I put it up on the community page, but I've been meaning to. I'll, I'll throw it up there later. If anybody hasn't seen um, DeFrace Aquariums, uh, I'll, I call him Rob because that's his first name, but uh, he uh, he made a plant order and did an unboxing. So if you if want to see what we're, you know, what we're shipping out, what people are getting, you could check out his video. I think he gave an honest opinion. A couple plants like had um you know so so leaves because they you know like one leaf out of like five didn't do well in shipping, but that's fine. Um, but he shows the plants, so no um. No movie magic to make ourselves look better, so I appreciate the honest uh, video. Anthony Brown says Osmoco can be good, but make sure it stays under the substrate that won't leach ammonia. Yeah, that's true too. Mark Dibble says, "Okay, thanks." Uh, Christopher Gonzalez, what's up? Nice Cleva Mintia on that shelf. Which one is that one? I don't know that name. What plant is that? That's got to be a, a scientific name because I, I never, I don't know it by that. I really, like, I know most aquarium plants by their scientific name, but I really don't know house plants by their scientific name. I just know, like, that's Fiddle Leaf Fig up, uh, up there. And, uh, oh, 
up there. It's like it's like reversed. I'm trying to like figure out where am I? Over the nope, over there. <laughs> Just over there is uh the asparagus fern. I don't know. You tell me which one it is. My hair is very wild today. I need to get a haircut soon. Let's see. On the shelf behind you next to the asparagus fern. Oh, you're talking about the, uh, I think it's called the silver, silver leaf philodendron or something like that. Let's see. Uh, any livestock suggestions for an eight gallon long planted with HC, Rickia, and some weeping and Taiwan moss? Um, I would go super nano fish or just maybe shrimp. Um, if you're looking for shrimp, you can always check out our local Facebook groups or Facebook groups or uh, Rob from um, Flip Aquatic sells great shrimp. You can check him out um, if you want to do fi uh, shrimp. If you want to do uh, fish, I would stick with nano fish. I w um, either that or maybe like a singular beta. Uh, but you could do like 10 like cherry raspberries or something. They're super tiny and they'll look super cool uh, because it's a small aquarium. So you can't really have too much. But you can do, um, you know, you can have like 10 cherry raspberries and they'll school and stuff. It'll look cool. Um, you offer great plants at competitive pricing compared to some others that rake you over the coals with high <laughs> high plant prices and ridiculous shipping and minimums. Yeah, Rob, I do uh, I do appreciate that. I, I know I um, I scope out the competition from time to time, and I, I, I just recently I looked at it. I'm like, wow, we're cheaper than I think everybody as far as uh, – for the most part, there's a couple plants that some people beat us on, but for the most part – Every major place where you're either at or or below what they sell it for, and we offer free shipping at thirty dollars, which has kind of been like a great thing. Like, very rarely do we ever get a person ordering just one plant because it's like if you're gonna spend seven dollars on the plant plus ten dollars on the shipping, you're at seventeen bucks. Just spend an extra thirteen dollars, get free shipping, and get like three more plants. So I think it's I think it's a great deal. It works out because. Most of the time, like people only want to order a couple plants. They don't want to order just one, and it uh, and works out. I, I would say we maybe only get like one order every week or so. That's just one plant. So the shipping, the free shipping, is a great thing to take advantage of. I definitely recommend everybody. Like, I I almost felt like just making it a minimum of thirty dollars, but then it's like you get that one person that just ah, I just I just want that one plant. I don't really need anything else and. So I understand that. So that's why we didn't make minimums. I hate I hate when places make you order minimums because it's just like, what if I just want one thing, you know? So, yeah. Um. Not sure if you remember me, but I had a red band grove with, uh, with a black growing tip a while back. An update. I clipped it off below the black, but it hasn't grown back. Not dead yet either. Huh? I do remember you. I don't. I don't know why that would be. It's interesting. Maybe it just takes a while. We'll see, I guess. Uh, the uh, I I actually did. Um, Jake let me knew, know earlier that our one of our suppliers has red mangroves, so I'm thinking about ordering uh, like ten of them for next week. I think uh, it'd be cool. We'll have some in. Also, plant plants should be coming. I think maybe at the end of this month or early next month, we'll be having pond plants. So if you're looking for any pond plants, uh, stay on the lookout. Dwarf Galaxy Raspberries and Gold Neon are what I use in my shrimp tank. That's awesome. I, I haven't seen Gold Neon, so I'll have to take a look at them. Cheryl Evans, hello. How's it going? Cheryl, did you... I think I just saw your name on an order. Was that you? Like, uh, I don't know, maybe today or a couple days ago. I could have sworn I saw that that name. If you, if you did, please an order. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I think it's fair what you do. Well, thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. I try, you know... We, I'm trying to fill that void in between, uh, you know, it, it just, you know what, it really harp, harp, like harps back to keeping the business really in the basement of my house because like I look at it and I'm like, wow, if I had to pay rent at a facility, I'd have to charge a lot more per plant, probably like an extra two or three dollars per plant to be able to afford um, the rent in a, in a place, maybe even, you know maybe even more but staying here i'm able to 
do it. And honestly, like we're at the right level where we have just the right amount of supply and just the right amount of demand that it equals out. We're, I mean, sometimes we run out of stuff and, um, you know, it, it sucks, but you know, it, there's only so many tanks we have, you know, to hold stuff in. So it's, uh, it's good. My Anubis plants uh, keep dying, and I'm not sure why. Also, how can I grow plants without roots? Well, uh, Elijah, what is happening with your Anubis plants? Can you describe, like, do they start losing a leaf every week? Are they turning mushy at the, the rhizome? Uh, what's kind of happening? Because, you know, just saying they're dying doesn't really help me diagnose the situation. So more detail will definitely help me, uh, hopefully better diagnose what's going on and also how can I grow plants without roots um, which plants and why do they not have roots um, let's see Nisi says shipping is ridiculous for Alaska with most places shipping within continental US look at a map random company Alaska is on the same continent <laughs> well I mean we anytime you border from us we haven't had a problem so it uh yeah, it doesn't seem to be an issue for us. We shipped to all 50 states. We shipped to Puerto Rico. I don't think... Have we shipped to the Virgin Islands yet? I don't know. I think... Where is... um? God, where's his... What's his name? Hardin? I can't remember his first name. He um He's in the Virgin Islands, right? Or is he in Puerto Rico? I forget. I think he's ordered from us before. I'm pretty sure he has. Joseph, that's his first name. Yes, I know it started with a J. Yes. Pretty sure he's ordered from us before and we've gotten it to him. Why do I keep seeing the light? Or is that just outside? I think that's just outside the uh, street. Virginia, uh, Virgin Islands. Yes, there you go. Okay. Um, I'll be looking for pond plants as soon as I'm able to get set back up again. And more plants for my 55. When the pond drained, I had to move the goldfish and koi inside and they ate everything. Dang. Yeah, Plural, you got to set up a separate tank for them or just get plants they don't eat. <laughs> Cheryl says, hi, I love your house plants. Thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate it. I love my house plants too. They're, they're, uh, they're great. I've kind of been neglecting them a little bit. I realized the other day, I'm like, when's the last time I watered you guys? And it's been quite a bit, so. Yeah, shipping, uh, shipping though isn't tough for us. You know, worst case scenario, we throw it in a flat rate box and just call it a day. Um, you know, but most, most orders are just fine within the, within the U S so we've had orders go to Hawaii too. And as far as I know, everything made it fine. So what is that sound? keep hearing like weird sounds down here we had a, a leak in our kitchen well not from our kitchen but from our bathroom upstairs shower for some reason the people like I said the people that did this house did not know what they were doing because their design sucked and they're just overall craftsmanship or installation ship whatever you want to call it sucked as well because they put in a shower with no rubber grommet around the drain hole so like you you have the shower pan, right? And then you have the hole for the drain and there's like a thing that goes in and screws in usually or goes over the top of it. Well, there's supposed to be a rubber grommet in between the thing that screws in and the shower pan. Most cases, they put nothing. There was absolutely nothing, which makes no sense because usually it comes with it. And um, these guys just did not know what they were doing, honestly, unfortunately. I didn't know what I was doing because I'm just like, we need a house. So we rushed into it. Probably shouldn't have, but... We have to deal with it, so I just have to fix the problems as they come along. But I fixed the, um, at least I think I fixed the shower drain um, a couple months ago. I, it was a nightmare. I tried so many things to get it to stop leaking. At the end of the day, I had to get this specialized thing that screws in over the top of it. Um, but it's like, I don't know, it was just weird how I had to do it. So I had to remove the other one, and then I literally had to hammer this thing down because it wouldn't fit all the way. And then it has these screws that you tighten, and then the screws have these like wings at the bottom that lock it into place. It has this weird um, 
grommet on the inside that allows it to move around the pipe. It's just weird. And, um, yeah. Not that, uh, you know, I wasn't a, I wouldn't say I'm like a, a regular handyman, but I wasn't completely incapable of figuring out what to do. And, um, it's just a pain in the butt. Owning a house sucks sometimes. Let's see. I grow my Anubis plants with Amazona, uh, Amazon, Am oh my God, Amazonia piranhas. And the roots keep growing into the water, so I trim them daily to keep them out. How do I keep them from growing? I grow my Anubis plants with Amazonian piranhas, and the roots keep growing into the water. I, I would just let them grow into the water. Why are you... Why are you trimming the leaves? Or the, the roots? Why are you trimming the roots? I don't understand. What is the plant? A stem, but it looks like an undersized down toilet brush looking. What? Did he looking? Huh? Anthony, rephrase that question. Yeah, if you're trimming the roots, like Rob just said, probably you're putting the plant to shock. You don't want them. I mean, they need the roots. That's the problem is the plants need the roots to absorb water and nutrients. They're not able to do that if you're cutting the roots. Um, it's kind of counterintuitive. If you want to try and um, restrict the root growth. So, I mean, I'm assuming what's happening is they're just growing. You don't want to see them. They're probably like, you know, hanging down and looking like, uh, I don't know just like little tiny dangly things there um what you could try and do is train the roots if they're grow, i mean you're dealing with piranhas so i don't know if you can stick your hand in or not i don't know what the difference is between piranhas uh but <laughs> what i would do if you could remove whatever they're growing on with the anubis remove the whole thing so if it's growing on like a a rocks or driftwood or something remove the whole thing and like kind of um use thread or super glue to glue down their roots so that way they're not going all over the place I wonder if Tony uh, Anthony is talking about Kambamba or something similar yeah it kind of sounds like Kambamba now that you mention it Anthony are you talking about Kambamba maybe Anacris uh, kind of I mean I guess you could say that they look like a toilet brush uh, upside down yeah, Elijah, you gotta, you gotta leave the roots on those plants. Unfortunately, um, roots are the main, like, that's like, that's like cutting, or that's like sewing your mouth shut. Like, you, you can't eat or drink anything, you know, so that's when you cut the roots off a plant. I mean, it, when you're cutting all the roots, when you could cut one or two here or there, it won't really affect the plant that much, but if you're cutting all of them to try and keep it from growing roots, uh, yeah, you're definitely doing more harm than good there. It's like pulling your teeth out before eating a steak. <laughs> That's a funny one. Besides the usual devil's vine, a.k.a. pothos, do you like any other pothos species to grow up and out of the aquarium? Um, as far as the houseplant goes, that you could use like this philodendron right, right there. That, that philodendron, that vine that's growing up right here, that could be in water. You could use peace lilies, uh, but those don't really grow. You know, those are just a singular plant. They're not going to grow crazy like uh, pothos would. You could use monsteras, believe it or not. I do have a, a monstera cutting in my paludarium tank in the back room. Um, those are about it, though. The roots on my Anubis are some of the best parts. One of them has roots about six inches long, and my fish love taking cover in them. Yeah. The, um, I like, like, if you had, like, a branch with, like, Anubis and the roots are hanging down, that just looks awesome. It's more natural looking, you know, um, or as natural as it could be. So, I would definitely, don't cut the roots. We need to make a shirt that says, don't cut my roots. <laughs> oh, so, speaking of shirts, I don't know why it just popped in my head, too. So, a buddy of mine recently got a, um... A shirt press machine 
right? And I know I did like a run of shirts a long time ago. And I didn't really like how how it's all done, right? I don't like the process of it. It's difficult on the website. It's just a pain in the butt to do. I have a couple design ideas. I actually have a couple designs that are done that I just haven't put onto shirts. I was thinking about doing kind of like a limited pre-order thing uh, for like a week. You know, people can put in their order and say, okay, I need one shirt, whatever, medium or small or whatever, right? Um, we take all the pre-orders and then I have my buddy who just got this machine to make them all. Um, I'm thinking about doing that and it would be one of those where the design would only be limited to that print run like we won't reuse the design. So it'd be like limit, you know, limited edition shirts. So I was thinking about doing that. I don't know. If you have ideas or suggestions on that, leave it in the comments below. Because I know like I, it's not just going to be like I don't want to just do like H2O plants across the shirt. I think that's kind of silly. I want to actually make cool designs and I have a couple cool ideas. Um, but it's just the online like whole thing that you could do with it. It's just a pain in the butt. I, I want to be able to like, you know, you order plants and you want your shirt in there. Boom, we got you, you know, like. But it would be like a lead time. It wouldn't be something that we could ship out right away because it would, you know, he'd have to make them. We take the pre-order first for the first week, you know, and then say we have a hundred pre-order shirts, then we, you know, then I send it to him and he would, um, he would make them all and then we'd ship them out within like two or three weeks. Any tips for fiddle leaf fig? Uh, nice sunny window works well and uh, just water about once a week. And you know, uh, when the top two inches of the soil are dry, water. Uh, typically, I water mine about every week. Sometimes, I, I mean, this guy sometimes even goes for two weeks, um, surprisingly, without water. does pretty well. So, um, fiddle leaf figs are the pretty easy, though, honestly. Probably the easiest plant I have. Every once in a while, it'll drop a leaf, but that's about it. Actually, it looks like one one's about to fall off. Actually, I think it already did. They're great plants, though. You can actually uh, cut, like, if I was to do this, this branch right here that's growing up. Oh, wait, that can't do it. Okay, yeah, this branch growing right here. I could cut that down at the bottom and then put that in some rooting hormone and replant it. It'll grow. It's kind of just like a stem plant in an aquarium. It's pretty easy. But I like how big it is, and I don't really want to do anything with it. And if... Um, here, I'll show you guys this. Don't mind that hole in the wall. I have to fix that hole in the wall. But you see that vine? That's uh, my pothos and more plants over there. But the, um, yeah, I want to wanna get that vine covering. The only thing is, that is the vine that has the mealy bug. So I need to really figure out how to, I, I tried more neem oil, but I don't think that's really working too well. I couldn't think of the name on how to describe it. It's all good. The plants are reclaim, reclaiming their territory. It is. <laughs> Pretty soon it's going to be like a, a jungle in here. You're going to hear water running and the plants, it's going to be high humidity. <laughs> Listen, the more green you have in the li in your life, the better. we got plants pretty much in every room. I got plants. Yeah, we got plants in the kitchen, living room, dining room. We have a plant in our bedroom. We have a couple plants in our bedroom actually now. We have a plant in, we have a couple plants in the bathroom. We have a plant in the hallway upstairs. We have plants in the hallway down here. We have plants in the bathroom down here. We have plants in the back room down here along with fish tanks. And Hector's room even has a plant. So yeah, we got, uh, we got plants in every room. Margaret, Margaret had a uh, fake plants before, um, H2O2. I've tried hydrogen peroxide. They, they freaking don't die. Mealybugs, they're terrible. I need to do something with them. Because I don't want to have to throw out this pothos. It's so long. I just want to get rid of the mealybugs. I don't know. My wife uses rubbing alcohol to spray right on the mealybugs to kill them. And the eggs. She's got a whole pothos wall. Yeah? I, I do usually a mixture of... Um, water and, and rubbing alcohol one part water one part alcohol but maybe I'll just try straight uh, straight alcohol 
It's like Jumanji. Watch out how that lion and a mad hunter doesn't appear. This is true. My co-worker put a new plant in the office over the weekend. It has mealybugs. Now I have mealybugs on a few plants. Dang, that sucks. Yeah, I told the story, I think, last time I streamed. Margaret brought home some stray plants, some orphan plants from her job that somebody wanted to get rid of, and they had mealybugs, and now uh, my main pothos has mealybugs. My uh, mealybugs, or my uh, pothos upstairs doesn't have any, though, luckily. I'm sure it's only a matter of time, though. I've got some of my orchids. Dang, that sucks. Orchids, though, it's not too bad to get rid of. Um, check in between all the leaves. Like, you have the little crevices of the leaves. Use a Q-tip, rubbing alcohol, boom. The problem with the pothos is there's so many leaves. They're everywhere. It's just a hassle to try and do. And now that Margaret hung up all the leaves, trying to make it look cute in here, it just, I don't have the heart to tell her. Be like, yeah, you really kind of screwed me up. It was much better when they were all just nice and close to each other. Now I gotta, like, get up on ladders to clean the leaves. It sucks, but... Yeah, that's the things you do for love. Melee bugs are the worst, though. They are, they honestly are, like, the absolute worst. I don't know why I always yawn. No, I'm not really tired, but I always yawn when I'm streaming. I don't know if it's because I'm talking so much. I don't know if I talk this much. Okay, don't know why we lost the internet. Sorry about that. Uh, stream went down momentarily. My aquarium. Sorry. <laughs> Is it fixed? It looks like it fixed itself. I don't know what the hell happened there. Technical difficulties. Anyway, uh, my aquarium pump is fixed to the surface of the aquarium. What would you suggest to get more flow around the middle or the bottom of the aquarium? No, it was me. I don't know why the, the stream just went out. That was weird. Like, my internet didn't seem to drop. Oops. Where did you guys go? Um, so, as far as uh, improving your... Um, yeah, my connection yawned as well. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. Chat, you, you guys are funny sometimes. Uh, let's see. Um, where's OBS? There we go. Okay. Uh, so, as far as improving your flow, I would look into uh, wave makers, little tiny wave makers. Um, I think they're, what is, what is the brand? What is the brand? I can't remember it. Hodor. Hodor? Hodor. What is that? I feel like it's, no. Hodor? Wave makers? No, no. I think it's Kodar. Kodar? Why can't I think of, is it Kodar? Hydor, that's what I'm thinking of, Hydor. H-Y-D-O-R wave makers. Yes, Hydor wave makers. Um, look into Hydor wave makers they're pretty good that's what we use in all the tanks downstairs um they're they're, they're pretty good it's the talking when i have back-to-back -back vendor meetings i own a lot also really yeah that's gotta be it All right, guys, I got about 10 minutes left, and then I got to head out of here. So I appreciate everybody watching. If you have any final questions, feel free to... Oh, shush. Honey, uh, feel free to... Honey, feel free to shoot them my way. Um, just a little recap again from the beginning, if you are just now joining us or wasn't here in the beginning. Um, new Tropical Plants are on the website right now. We just got a new... Uh, a new batch in today and um, there are some new plants in there so definitely take a look at it the um, the sword plants look really good let's so check those out yarns are your brain trying to get more oxygen so talking a lot is probably the cause could it be I feel like it is but it doesn't it only happens when I'm streaming I don't know maybe it's like talking for an hour straight it can make you yawn I guess I don't know 
It's like it would be easier if there was two people here because like one person could talk and you know like in between you know I only have to talk half as much but that's not the case so uh, but yeah anyway um, what are we doing here so just on a little side note it's pretty funny if you some of my videos that I made like two years ago they're a little ridiculous and I know um, I don't know what I was thinking I, I, I guess it, you know what it is is at that time I was watching all these different youtubers aquarium youtubers all these other youtubers and I was like kind of emulating them in my videos in a way and um, since then I literally have, I don't watch any aquarium youtubers anymore uh, unfortunately um, I just I, I found that they were influencing my videos too much and um, so I look back and I get these crazy comments somebody commented earlier because I guess I was talking with my hands too much in one of the videos to like sit on your hands <laughs> that, that comment just cracked me up I'm like wow they're like I'm like yeah I probably use my hands way too much then and then there's this one video it's like one of the, it's in the, my, the top five viewed videos on my channel but I'm running around the, the house or the basement with the camera going like, going like, what's up guys, like this, and then switching it off and running back and forth like with high energy. And I'm like, oh my God. And people are constantly commenting. They're like, you're making me dizzy with this video. But it's like one of my most viewed videos. So I think I have to redo it and not like walk around with the camera with like a madman. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking, honestly. It's one of those you look back on and you're like, yeah, probably should have made that a bit better. <laughs> but yeah, the, the the comments on some of the older videos are just, they're absolutely priceless. And I just let them comment. Like, I don't delete them because they're hilarious. Let's see. Do Amano shrimp eat limnophilia heterophilia? My plants have been decimated and I'm not sure... If it's them or my or the beta hmm I doubt it's the shrimp but I also doubt it's the beta are you sure they're being eaten and not just like melting back or something uh, okay okay I'll stop by on live stream nights awesome plural yeah, it's every other uh, Wednesday we stream around 7 p.m. Eastern time. Typically, it's been on time the last couple of streams, so I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to apologize for being late, really. I think today I was like two minutes late, but that's not fun. Sometimes I'm like 15 minutes late. It's tough with the baby. Sometimes um, she just doesn't want to want to do anything today we we actually took her to the doctor so i had off from work today we took her to the doctors and um the doctor was very impressed because she was um i so i knew she was gonna get shots today and so uh i, I made sure because last time i was there she, i had to get her tested for the flu a couple uh, months ago because she just wasn't doing too well she had this really bad cough and stuff so um so when i was at at the uh at the doctors with her I literally had to hold her down with my entire body to allow them to do the flu test where they stick the thing in the nose which sucks but they had to do it and um, it took all my strength to hold her down because she was just not having it so this this time I went in prepared because normally Margaret takes her and she's like she never wants to do anything so I'm like alright I got an idea so I went and I got her a brand new toy that she hasn't seen yet I brought a lollipop and M&M's with me so I had all that in my pocket she didn't even see the toy yet so it wasn't until we got into the room that she, you know, when she started freaking out, I'm like, here's the toy, look at the toy. So anyway, so she, the toy talks, or, or not talks, kind of talks, but in, and then it shows colors. Um, it's like this little talking cat thing. And um, so she was ta saying all the colors as, as a, you know, as it's going on. And she, she knows all her colors. She's known them for probably the last six months. She's really good with them. Maybe even longer. It's probably been more like eight months. But, um, so the doctor comes in and hears her saying all the colors and she's like, how old is she? And we're like, two. We're like, she knows all her colors? We're like, yeah, she also knows her alphabet. She can identify letters, not just repeat. Like, she doesn't just recite them. She knows the letters. Like, she'll go up to our license plate and knows, like, J, V, L is, you know, 
and um, so uh, so yeah the um, the doctor was just impressed she's like she's very advanced uh, for verbal I'm like I told you so to Margaret because Margaret didn't believe me I'm like no that's not just I'm like Listen, I, I know, like, every parent says, like, yo, my kid is mad smart, usually. Like, you know, you're just very proud of your kid. I'm like, no, I've never met a two-year-old that knows all her colors, can recite the alphabet, identify uh, numbers and letters, and knows the difference between zero and uh, an O, and knows the difference between cyan and blue. The kid, it blows my mind sometimes, the things she knows. And I'm like... Yeah, no, she's definitely very, very verbally advanced. Like, she's not, you know, the doctor even says she's like, yeah, no, she's way ahead. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> but, um, because Margaret's like, ah, oh, you just have your daddy eyes. That's just your daughter, and you're just so proud of her. I'm like, I am, but it's true. She's very, very smart for her age. Um, so yeah. Oh, that's a genius parenting hack. I'll have to tell my new parent girlfriends. Yes. So, distraction, yeah, definitely distraction is key. Yeah, so new toy, and I had a lollipop ready. So, so the um, she had to get three shots today, and um, so she had the toy, and the second like she the the shots came, she was flipping out. So they put the first one in, and she was crying. I'm like, you want a lollipop? And I gave her the lot, and she was like, oh, okay, lollipop. She stopped crying immediately, and I unwrapped the lollipop. They did the next one. She started crying, and I'm like, oh, but you have a lollipop, and she's like, oh, lollipop, you know. So. You um. It it you just have to like at least with her I I know what makes her tick and I know like you can easily distract her, um and like make her not care about whatever's happening. So she still cried a little bit, but it was way easier than any time before. I'm sure. So. She's getting so big. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Yeah, she really is. She's growing up way too fast. Um, yeah, I can't understand it. They usually grow really well and thick, but it looks as though their leaves have been stripped off bare. Hmm. I mean, it very well could be the amount of shrimp, maybe just from grazing on them so much that they're just too soft and tender that the amount of shrimp are just kind of ripping them, and that's causing them to die back. Um, what I would say, maybe try trimming them, like, a bit, because... Even if the stem doesn't have that many leaves on it, it'll still continue to grow and put off uh, uh, offshoots. So we want. So what you want to do is try and stimulate more growth than what's being eaten, essentially, if they are being eaten. So I would try hacking them all down by half and replanting. And um, yeah. Before long, she will know the A to Z of aquatics. Yeah, she's she's always down in the uh, aqu um, fish room with us when we pack orders. And uh, she she has a lot of fun, so I'm actually going to be building her a um, stool soon that reaches up to the counter level of downstairs, so she can actually do stuff too with us. Um, so it'll be cool, cause she she like she picks up the box and brings it to Jake when when Jake needs to weigh it or something. She's mad cute. Uh, I've enjoyed the show to work. Or, or I've enjoyed the show. Back to work. I'll catch the replay. Thanks again for the info and help in the chat you're welcome anthony no problem might have an uninvited guest in the aquarium eating the leaves yeah that's true that is very true you might have something that you don't know of it could be snails too if you have snails um sometimes you know they don't like they're not eating the leaves purposely but enough agitation to them may cause them to fall off so that's that's a possibility all right guys but it is eight o'clock i gotta run um margaret is waiting for me upstairs uh, I gotta give the baby a bath. I think it's my turn, probably. So, uh, with that said, I want to thank everybody for checking out uh, the stream. Check out the website for the new tropical plants if you want to pick some up. Like I said, limited stock, so they'll probably go fast. I got one question here from Fin Aquatics or Fin Fanatics. I'll answer before I leave. Hi H two O. I've uh, I've got a three hundred liter uh, bo uh, aquarium bottom in a deep tank, and it's fully planted uh i've got a, i think he said that i got a lot of debris on the hmm, on the gravel oh, okay on the gravel would a wave maker help also why does a outlet for a canister keep sucking water even when off um so when um 
Why won't it show? So the uh, wave maker would definitely help. I definitely suggest that. Get a wave maker and point it in the direction of where the dead spot is. You'll still probably have a dead spot somewhere in the aquarium, but you'll probably have less of it. Um, there will always be a dead spot unless you have like 50 wave makers just making it a constant circulation. You're, you're just never going to not have a dead spot. But the idea is to have it somewhere where you can't see it maybe as much, doesn't bother you. Or, um, you know, it's a little less because you, you have it blow, blowing around the detritus so it gets sucked up by the filter. Um, why does uh, the canister keep sucking water even when it's off? Because suction. There is a, um, you know, it's already created a suction through the tubes. So you have to break the suction in order for it to stop sucking, essentially. It happens all the time. Uh, thanks for talking in my ear while I added new items to my store. Have a great couple of weeks. Awesome fish keepers. See ya. See you later, Nisi. Thanks for hanging out. Plural. See you later. Glad I could finally catch a live stream. Thanks for the info. You're welcome, Kevin. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Uh, thanks for hanging out. And um, have a good rest of your week. And I'll see you in two weeks. Peace out.